Next up, we have Don Sepulveda. It's like they named the boulevard after you. Sepulveda, okay. The executive officer of Regional Rail Metro um, and, and Metro for the LA County Metro Transportation Authority. Um, he leads the team responsible for high-speed rail in Los Angeles County. He also manages a Metro-owned commuter rail right-of-way, uh, Metro's involvement with Metrolink and associated goods movement. Uh, prior to joining Metro, he worked in the private sector uh, as a project manager for railroad infrastructure projects throughout Southern California and other parts of the U.S. And I, I love that you have been involved with positive train control and, and uh, railroad safety because, as you know, Metro North in, in New York, we had that horrible accident uh, a while back. So thank you for that. And it's your turn. Thank you. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to say real quickly, and I consider it an honor to be on the same uh, stage with you, uh, I want to thank you for the leadership that you have shown. I've been involved with high-speed rail for about 20 years in various shapes and forms, and the leadership that you've shown over the years has been very inspiring and, very, and just excellent. So thank you very much. Have I got a clicker? Yes, I've got a clicker. And it's actually color-coded for me. This thing is actually very easy. It's actually got little symbols on it that actually are large, so I can actually follow it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit about network integration and about what we're doing at Metro for network integration. And uh, so uh, that's a fairly new term that we've used and uh, one that is being uh, discussed throughout the state. As a matter of fact, I spent the day up uh, yesterday in Sacramento working with the folks uh, that are working on the, the new state rail plan. And the new state rail plan has a key component of it is passenger network integration. And this is, this is network integration that utilizes a backbone of high-speed rail with inner city and commuter rail and, tr and local transit all working together <clears throat> excuse me, in a concert, in concert with each other to create a transportation system that is actually state of the art. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> you guys gave me the frog. So uh, I want to talk to you a bit about what we're doing to meet those goals as we start moving forward with, a, uh, with our uh, uh, integrated network. The graphic that you see is our, uh, that's our brand for SCRIP, the Southern California Regional Interconnector Project, which I will talk about in a moment. But uh, that has been called one of the most pro important projects in, so in Southern California and in the state for rail integration as we move, start moving forward, and I'll get into that in a minute. So a little bit about Metro um, and why it's so important. This is our local county transit system. You see there that the center of the stage where you see the bold red, that's Union Station. I refer to Union Station as Rome. That's where all rail lines meet. And uh, you'll see it even more in the next slide. But this is our local transit system. So this is the backbone, or not the backbone, but I should say the, the last mile of network integration. This is what we deal with in LA Metro. And the pink lines are lines that have actually inner city and commuter rail on them. That purple line that you see coming in from the north is the high speed rail project. Uh, this uh, this uh, has not been updated to show the, uh, the other possible routes that the high speed rail has, but it's there just the same. The other route would be actually extending it underneath the Angeles Crest Highway and joining in Burbank. Uh, so again, the center of the stage is Rome. In the center of the slide, you'll see a, where all the rail lines lead into Union Station and, uh, and actually meet the local transit that you see in light yellow on this slide. So at Metro, we're doing about $30 billion in projects through our Measure R program. Uh, at the Regional Rail Group, we actually have $2.7 billion in projects that we're in the process of developing. Now, up until a few months ago, that was only uh, about a billion. We've had an increase, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, so we're actually building and transforming our transportation system into the future. So our capital program that we've developed is actually enhances grade crossings. We're looking at grade crossing safety. We're looking at grade separations. We're looking at capacity projects. One of the things that has uh, been stagnant in Los Angeles County is growth on the regional rail lines from an infrastructure standpoint. So we're addressing some of those growth issues with our program. Uh, there's our measles map, if you will, of our projects. 
And, uh, and I'm going to discuss a, a couple of them in detail, but uh, I'm, I'm going to briefly hit most of them here. Uh, the script project I just mentioned, I'll talk about in a moment. Our first grade separation, and uh, this is a project on what we call the MOU list. This is a, a memorandum of understanding between the High Speed Rail Authority and the southern bookend uh, uh, counties that actually will uh, bring a billion dollars of advanced investment into Southern California from 1A and other funds. So we've got four of the projects on the list in development. The first is a Doran Street grade separation, or, or the second is a Doran Street grade separation that is actually um, going to grade separate for high speed rail and conventional at the same time. Is that an echo, is that, is that just me or is it really out there? Uh, the next one is a double track project in Van Nuys between Van Nuys and Chatsworth, which is a link on the Low Sand Corridor, which is the second busiest inner city passenger rail corridor in the country. The Van Nuys second platform is another one on that same corridor. We're gonna take a single track platform and convert it into a center platform to serve two main tracks. The Bob Hope Airport station is a key one for us. That's item number six. That is a new station at, uh, at Bob Hope Airport that's going to provide connection to the airport via train for northern Los Angeles County, and they don't have that now. The, uh, we're doing a pedestrian overpass. I talked about safety projects. There's one right there. Our rosecrans markhart grade separation. The rosecrans markhart grade crossing has been called the most hazardous grade crossing in the state of California. It is number one on the PUC Section 190 list. Recently, we've had a couple of fatalities there, and we've historically have had other ones. What we're doing, this is a, a grade separation, a grade crossing that is diagonally through in the intersection of two streets, and it gets 130 trains a day and 45,000 vehicles a day. So we're going to grade separate this, and we're going to build a grade separation that's big enough for five tracks, and that would include high-speed rail blended service when high-speed rail comes in. So we're moving forward with that one. We're about 35% designed on, a, on, a, on a, that development, that project. It's moving forward very, excuse me, very quickly. And that is another MOU project. Uh, Lone Hill to Wide is a double track project that's in the planning stages or environmental stages, I should say. Uh, Brighton to Roxford, I talked about. Uh, and the, of course, our statewide, our countywide LA Craig Crossing and Quarter Safety Program. What we're doing is we're looking at 111 at grade crossings in the county of Los Angeles that we own, that Metrolink operates. And we're going to, to do a hazard analysis on these and advance some of these in, in for enhancement and advance four of them for grade separation. So this is what we're moving forward with in, this, in the county. And there's a little bit uh, of the cost and the big number is down at the bottom of 2.7 uh, billion. And the big cost driver is the new cost for a script, which is up on top at 2.1 billion, which is up from the 350 million that it was a few months ago. And I'll t again, I'll tell you why right now. The Southern California Regional Interconnector Project. This, this is an aerial view of Union Station. It's a stub in station. Everything comes and goes from the northern throat. That's a five track throat. When that, ha when that is uh, clogged up or there's a challenge there, the station goes down essentially. This morning we had a signal debacle on the, uh, in the north throat of, Los of Union Station and trains were delayed up to 30 minutes in getting out of Union Station and getting into Union Station. It's a bit of a challenge when that happens. But even more important is right now we have trains idling 50 hours a day in Union Station. With this project we'll actually move half of those, we'll take uh, six of those tracks and we'll move them across the 101 freeway out the south and we'll create a throughput station for about 50% of the trains that go into the station, which will re significantly reduce our greenhouse gases by, we think, about 44%. Uh, it increases our capacity from about 180 to 278 trains peak. It is the, uh, the, pinpoint, the center point of the universe here right now for us in Southern California. As, and go back to the Rome analogy that I used earlier, imagine a train coming from Orange County or San Diego, coming up into Union Station, dwelling as a normal station dwell stop, and then heading out to San Luis Obispo or Northern Los Angeles County. That is what's in the future for us here at Union Station. Currently, that train has to come in through the north, 
It has to stop at Union Station. It takes 20 minutes to, to change ends on the, union, on the uh, train because of positive train control and other uh, mechanical issues. And then they pull out again. That is where the idling ha happens and that's where the challenge happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate that for most of those trains. Here's why we're doing it. We've got a growth factor at Union Station that's incredible. Uh, we expect actually a 69% growth in Metrolink trains. We have a 100, 000, uh, approximately 100,000 growth or 20,000 growth in daily, this is daily trips by the way, of, uh, of high speed rail coming into Union Station. So this exemplifies the need. Where we are right now is the lower bar where we gotta be is the upper bar. And that's a problem. We're not gonna make it without a project such as Scrip and some of the other projects that we're doing. This is an aerial view of script, uh, kind of in a, a, in a conventional sense. This is the, uh, if you, uh, does this laser work? No, it doesn't. Okay. Yes, it does. Use the right symbol, Don. Um, this is the five track throat I was talking about. Trains come in currently and then they go out through that throat to go wherever they have to go. With script, they're gonna come through, come out and go either southbound or, or northbound. There's a, a Y, what we call a Y right here. So you can see what it does to the operations at Union Station. And you can see our challenges when our throat goes down, what happens when trains have to be what we call walked through the signaling system at Union Station? It's quite the challenge. So here's where we are now. We've been approached by the California High Speed Rail Authority and talking about high speed rail inside Union Station. If you remember, we've done a master plan on the uh, on uh, Union Station. That master plan showed actually high speed rail across the street from Union Station on Vignus. Since then, we've been looking at Union Station with the High Speed Rail Authority, and we've come up with an idea to fit high speed rail inside Union Station. How it fits there, we're still working out. <laughs> we've got the devil's in the details. We've got a lot of agreements in our future, but it looks like high speed rail fits in Union Station. So I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. But what that actually means is we've got to step up the pace on script and get it completed by 24 when high speed rail is really moving forward and, and happening. So what uh, it looks like, what it, the big killer for us right now is the concourse. Now, currently at Union Station, you take a ramp to go to your train. And if we were to, in order to get across the freeway, you have to raise the platforms. In order to raise the platforms, you have to extend the ramps. And ADA compliant ramps actually take you past the ends of the platforms. The master plan came up with this concourse. This is the new concourse for Union Station and it deals with elevators and escalators at these points to get down to the, to get to the platforms. Significant difference than what you have right now. Right through here is the red line structure and the red line structure is, is pretty shallow. So we've had to take and create this sort of X pattern with our, our uh, structures in order to meet that goal. What this means is that Union Station tracks are gonna be on structure, the platforms are gonna be on structure over this passenger concourse. And that's what it'll look like. So Union Station, as you know it, changes dramatically into this now uh, open space concourse that is no longer a, a, a tunnel. If anybody's been in that tunnel uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon when all, everybody's trying to meet their trains, it's kind of bustling in there. It's a shame that nobody takes transit in California because they certainly don't go to Union Station, right? <coughs> um, so what this does is this actually takes, and now you can get a better picture of what it looks like, and it expands that whole space to actually include a a lot more things. Union Station has become this destination lately. Uh, you go to Union Station at all times of the day. People are there, they're dining, they're drinking at the Tracks Bar. Uh, we're getting in a, uh, a brewery. Uh, we've been leasing out space for, for retail. And so it, Union Station is changing as we know it. 
This is what script looks like with high-speed rail. High-speed rail will take the western side of the station and it will come in from the north at grade, split up to two platforms. How those platforms are configured, we're still working on. We just don't know. Uh, we've, we're doing capacity modeling to determine how many conventional tracks we actually need in Union Station. It looks like, at, at best guess right now, it looks like this across the 101 freeway, 101 freeway is a 10 st track structure with six conventional and four high speed rail tracks, all converging through here and then going through and, uh, and joining where they've got to join. This is the script of the future, and this is the script that we're trying to work on and develop with the High Speed Rail Authority. You can see the change. In order now, and before, we were just raising two tracks and bringing it across the freeway for $350 million. Now we're raising the entire yard, building the entire concourse, and realigning all the tracks and rebuilding all the tracks through the throat. It's a different project, and it's a phasing, interesting phasing challenge that we've got ahead of us, because this station has to be operational while we build it. And not only does the tracks have to be operational, but we've also got to provide passage for people to go from the east to the west portal as they go through the station. There's our cost estimate, and this is why we jumped, because the cost estimate is about $2.1 billion. Uh, this is a, uh, a planning level estimate. We, <clears throat> we haven't developed it very far yet, but this is, the, this is the existing estimate that we're working with. A little bit on the high desert corridor, we talked about network integration. <clears throat> you may have heard about this little high speed rail project called Express West. And Express West will actually connect Victorville to uh, Las Vegas. This project that's in the environmental stage right now will connect Palmdale to Victorville, and this will actually provide, with high-speed rail connecting in Palmdale, in a Y at Palmdale, we'll actually be able to, in the future, send people from Las Vegas to Los Angeles via high-speed rail, or Las Vegas to Bakersfield via high-speed rail, or all kinds of things. You could see what a game changer. What happens is, is Union, or the Union Station is Rome in Southern California. This becomes kind of a, a, another transportation terminal, if you will, up in Northern LA County. It's very important for the future of what we're trying to do. Uh, environmental document will be out in the spring for, uh, for this project. A couple of the other projects I wanted to briefly go over. This is a new station we're building at Bob Hope Airport. It's at Hollywood Way on the Antelope Valley Line. I mentioned earlier that northern Los Angeles County, Palmdale, Santa Clarita, Lancaster, do not have a rail connection to Bob Hope Airport. So what we do is we're thinking of planes to train connection. So we're building a station at Bob Hope Airport. It's actually going to go out to construction bid next month. And uh, we're excited about this. And this is kind of what it looks like. Of course, if we see a plane in this position, uh, when, the, when the project's done, we've got a problem because that plane's landing on San Fernando Road. Um, but you know how architects get, it, get uh, with their artistic uh, ideas. The, uh, the panels are, oh no, what I just do? There we go. The panels are uh, actually triangular shaped and they're angled at various different angles, kind of, a, if you would, like a stealth fighter body looks like. And the idea is to keep it in tune with Lockheed. Lockheed used to be across the street from where this, pan this uh, station is. So it's in trying to keep it in theme with Lockheed and how Lockheed is. So with that in mind, I'm through for questions. And, and uh, I don't know when we were opening up for questions. Tons of time now. We got all kinds of time. I kind of I cut it short for the... Uh, for the, uh, because of the panel discussion. So, does anybody have any questions? I just have one. Union Station is a beautiful building. So Union Station's a beautiful building. So with all this developmental change, how much is that gonna impact the original building? The historic building as you see it will remain as you see it. The, 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 uh, the beauty of Union Station is its building and its architecture. Uh, this station was built in 1939. It was the last great train station on the way to the west. And we don't want to change that. What we're talking about when we redo the concourse is we're talking about the area where the tracks are. 
okay? Um, we've been doing a lot of work at Union Station. We bought Union Station back in 2011. And since then, we've been upgrading the station and doing a lot of work. We've replaced the roof recently. We've installed high, high uh, uh, air conditioning in the, system, in the, in the uh, station. So we're in the process of, of rejuvenating the station, but keeping its classic character and its classic space. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh I asked uh, somewhat of the question to Phil when he was here yesterday about the high-speed rail billion dollars that uh, they committed to this project. Uh, and one of the I'm on the high-speed rail business advisory council, and one of the, the concerns were we uh, were looking at that these agencies that would get some of the funding from the high-speed rail they would honor that 30% goal in terms of the DBE small business, and you pretty much pretty, probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, Listening to you now, it seems like the only thing that you've done on this project, maybe you can correct me, because I'm trying to get information I can also take back, so I'm just trying to be informed on what's happening up here. Uh, is the uh, design work being done, that's pretty much what you're doing now is part of the design work, and if you're doing design work, is all that being done in-house, and also are you uh, making those, some of those contracts available to uh, outside firms, and also are you promoting uh, the fact that if you are getting that, those funds, that there is a goal of 30%. So you could give it kind of an overlay of what's happening with that part of it. We currently have a contract on this project. We're changing it uh, as we speak because we're changing the scope of the project to do, to handle high-speed rail. It is a, uh, so it, this pro contract is going to provide preliminary engineering and environmental clearance for the project. Uh, this opens up for a, us up for an alternative delivery method if we should so choose. Right now, we have uh, almost 29% SBE participation in this project. Uh, I don't recall offhand what the DVBE is, participation is. I'm sorry, I don't have that. But uh, one of the things that we've been taking very seriously at Metro and one of the things I've been taking very seriously in my projects is ensuring that we have solid SBE participation in our projects. The Lone Hill to White project I talked about a moment ago was actually what we call, uh, it was a set-aside project and SBEs were, were, because of our policy of where the level of design, or level of uh, the contract is, the policy is it's a set aside for SBEs to prime it. And that, so we've, we're right now in the procurement with an SBE firm and discussions with an SBEA firm, negotiations to actually move that project forward. So we've been very, very strong on SBE commitment here at Metro and especially in the regional rail group. Uh, Don, um, are you going to raise all the platforms or are you just going to raise the high speed rail platform? And if, if so, how many platforms do you intend to have? Would they all be center platforms? Will they all be center platforms? It'll be the same amount of platforms we have now. Right. They'll be wider platforms because there's some pocket tracks we'll be eliminating as we, uh, as we move forward with the project. But yes, every platform at Union Station will be raised. Five, seven feet or more? 11 feet. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> we, need, we need more than 11 feet vertical clearance on that concourse. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, let me, uh, we want the clearance here to be a bit more than 11 feet for fire life safety and for wayfinding. If it's, minimum is 10 and a half feet, but 10 and a half doesn't really work for signage. So that's, that's what's driving us. So the, uh, the concourse is open, is it? Uh, we're still line. working on that as to how it's going to be. I see. So how many platforms do you anticipate? Six platforms. I see. And that should take care of it for a long, long time. Yeah. Okay. Is there Is it six platforms? I'm mental blocking on platform numbers here. Okay. We have platform seven minus one, six platforms. Is the MTA headquarters going to remain, or is that also going to be a part of the script project? I'm sorry? Is the MTA headquarters building going to remain? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah just, we're just dealing with the yard and the concourse. Just with the yard, okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot.
So are, are these, is, the, is the funding secured for all these projects, or will some of it be contingent upon maybe a potential um, ballot measure as uh, Mark is saying this? Scrip is probably going to rely on a ballot measure and also additional funding from the high-speed rail authority. So we're not sure how that's shaking out yet. We're working on that. Um, the other projects are funded through state and local funding. Um, the, uh, the Bob Hope Airport Station has Measure R and FHWA grant money on it. Raymond de Bernson has what we call STIP money on it. So we've got, and Van Nuys has STIP money on it, State 1B money on it. So, um, so most of these projects are actually already funded. Rosecrans Markhart's completely funded through, uh, through Measure R, uh, Proposition 1A, Proposition 190, and BNSF. Yes? I know that in the original version of the implementation master plan that I saw, there was um, a lot of incorporation, sorry. In original versions of the unionization master plan that I saw, there were a lot of, uh, there was a lot of talk about incorporating some sort of connection to the LA River with a uh, bike accessible lane that would bridge across all of the tracks um, to make it easy for bikes to not only get into the station and onto the trains, but also to clear over to the LA River and make a connection there. Is that still in the works? I, or I, I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. Um, we are, we have added to the consultant contract a pedestrian and bike uh, access underpass, if you will, to look at as part of script. And that would most likely be at the north end under the throat. But we've added that to the contract to look at that because, as you know, right now they're looking at bike paths along the LA River. And that would be a provide that connection to the LA River. So we're, that, that's one of the things we're looking at. Bike as, bicycle access inside Union Station, I'm not really familiar with. I couldn't answer that. Thank you. One of my favorite board members. I have a very practical question for you. How much, um, if you can give us a range of you have all those grade separations that you're creating, how much are they costing you? Rosecrans Markhart's costing us $110 million. Brighton, uh, the uh, Doran Street is costing us $83 million. And uh, we're getting somewhat of a, uh, a bonus with, uh, with Doran Street. Because what we've done is we've designed a grade separation that actually allows us to close two at grade crossings. So we're getting two for the price of one. Um, I, I was, I, one time I used the analogy, I'm killing two birds with one stone, but that didn't seem appropriate for grade crossing closure. So, so I, we're getting two for the price of one on that one. So it's $83 million and it actually serves high speed rail at the same time. Now, as we start moving forward, we're not sure yet because we don't we haven't identified grade separations yet. They range anywhere from 40 up to 150 million. I don't I don't know where we can go where we're going to go on that. Uh, one of the things that we are looking at is we're advancing the four for to project study report and we're looking at co at costs and then we'll start working with this local city to start working on funding and how we can start working as a team to gather funding for these projects. Nobody asked the most important question. How about those Packers? <laughs> Is that? Very benign. It doesn't create traffic. A lot of the other problems that you end up with in a, in a big station. Like you're, you're spot on, Andy. And one of the things that we've done is we've done a linkage study to actually connect Union Station to the surrounding community. One of the problems with Union Station, as it sits right now, is it's it's somewhat of an island if you will, with no easy way to get to it. So we've looked at a study of how to do that, and how to link it by bicycle and other methods to do that. Uh, one of the things that we're also looking at is the uh, Alameda Street, uh, turning Alameda Street into an esplanade, uh, which narrows the street and actually provides a, a, a walkable uh, space out there and, uh, and actually builds on that whole concept. So we're right on that one, starting to move that forward. Our active transportation folks are all over it. All right.
Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.